San Francisco's West Coast Circuit just wrapped up, and I wanted to make a top three video around sneaky good plays by Warriors. But it turns out that watching all the footage back was going to take a lot of time, so I decided to just watch back the sets from the winning team tapping for six. But I think I have uh, three really good plays that I want to talk about, and I think that it should be pretty useful. Okay, so coming in at number three, this sequence is actually the sequence that gave me the idea for this video. In general, when I see clips, a lot of times they highlight like flashy plays. And what I generally like to highlight in a lot of these videos is less flashy things that people might miss because I think it helps players see like what really, really high level players do um, in order to understand why something is so important. So this first sequence, uh, we'll watch it back real time first and we're gonna see, um, and what we're focusing on is blue queen and blue skulls. Yep, so sequence starts with uh, Blue Skulls just covering the speed gate. And it's that cover right there that I think is so important and very easily missed. So let me slow it down and uh, talk about why I think that was such like a sneaky good play. So right now, the Blue Queen is being sandwiched, is going to be sandwiched by the enemy queen and gold skulls after finishing his job covering the speed gate the the high level recognition has to be there to see the play that is being developed in the middle and see exactly where he needs to be in order to help the queen and outside of just the recognition which is already like a very very important thing in itself the execution of this play is it real time is really really good so if you watch it back slow-mo, the queen is being chased right now. And the only path that skulls can take to be able to get to this edge in time is a direct line under this edge ledge. And I think a lot of times when players, you know, cap the uh, cap a ledge for their queen, they have a lot more time to think and they have a lot more time to get there. So maybe they'll take a high path, uh, come down this way in order to give the queen uh, that out. But Felix's ability to understand the distance and feel the timing is so uh, perfect in this sequence that it makes this cover look really, really easy, where I think this is an incredibly hard cover and like a very sneaky good play. So you'll see he gets there in the nick of time um, in order to help the queen out of this very tricky situation. And outside of just Felix's play also has to come the recognition of the queen to be able to push full speed, trusting that his warrior is going to see the same thing that... Uh, that that they see in order to make that play. So that's why I found this to be like a really, really interesting and like incredibly good play here. There's the trust by the queen, the direct line by the warrior and the recognition by the warrior early. So that is uh, my number three for the sets from tapping four six. All right, coming in at number two is a play by Sam on blue abs and I'm just going to play this one uh, slow-mo and talk about it uh, as it develops so right now gold is wiped they're trying to get a warrior up on this gate and for a lot of the sets that I watched Sam was playing O guard and a really important component to this is how much she does outside of just being O guard so here what we're gonna see is she's picking off a lot of the drones you know, if you watched over the set right before this, she got a queen kill, but I wasn't trying to highlight, you know, really flashy plays, uh, just sort of the sneaky, interesting, nuanced situations that I wanted to highlight to talk about, like why uh, positionally some of these things were so good in my, um, in my opinion, is what happens right here. So the more things you can do at once, the better, right? So Sam is going to pick off some of these drones. But at this time, I'm sure what's happening now is uh, one drone just got picked off. So they're going to be spawning over here. Another drone's uh, trying to get up over here. The one just got eaten. So I think a lot of times players at this point, you know, they're just scanning their immediate vicinity, seeing what they want to do. But what you're going to see now <clears throat> is Sam covers the only route that uh, like the highest route that the queen can take at this point in order to get um, to in to stop the snail. So th 
this I guarantee is not a mistake, right? Her ability to see that the queen was coming through the wrap and 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 uh, capping this ledge is hyper important because it it makes the queen have to go back and take a lower, inherently more unsafe route in order to get to the snail, right? I think a lot of times what happens is warriors will take, um, you know, some maybe like this position here or up here or something. The queen comes in. And then once the queen gets to the ceiling, like, what are you going to do? Are you going to hard read the queen? Like, yeah, some people try to do that. Like, sometimes I'll try to do that or whatever. But letting the queen even into this situation over here is just a lot more safe for that for the enemy queen to make a play. So capping this ledge in order to not allow the queen to come through this um this this path makes them have to go lower and you're going to see what's going to happen in a second right now your queen can follow the enemy queen in and now you have a pinch situation on the queen in the lowest ledge um in this area right versus what would have happened before if sam had simply just continued to stay in this area not monitoring the queen Right, the queen can come this way, Sam is taking a high position. If the queen comes over here, maybe she can cap this edge over whatever. I guarantee she's monitoring where the queen is going. As this queen comes over here, she's capping this ledge. Now, if the enemy queen was able to get into this position because she was out of position over here or over there, what's going to happen? Well, maybe a uh, blue queen comes high route or follows the queen directly through here. They get the sandwich over here, but the queen can then dive through this ledge and then get out in multiple different ways. But because... The warrior's here, queen takes less safe route, they're in a pinch position, and Sam gets a kill to end the game. So, um, yeah, I mean, the kill in itself, great. Like, that's a hard kill to make. But really, again, like, what I want to highlight is just the really, really good, like, sneaky positioning that allowed for this play to happen. And I think that was, like, just an excellent positioning play. And coming in at number one is a Sam play with Sam being on O-Guard again. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to play it back real time, uh, not speak over it. And then after that, I'm going to break it down uh, in slow-mo. So we're looking at blue abs right now. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in slow-mo, go back and talk about why I picked this for my number one. So where I started the clip is pretty intentional. <clears throat> I think a lot of people would take a look at that play and say, oh, okay, he's pointing out that Mantis at the end. And yeah, Sam is one of the best at Mantises, maybe the best. But the thing I want to highlight is not that, because I think a lot of people already know that, that about Sam, right? Like, whenever you hear commentators, they're always talking about, oh, like, don't dive on Sam. And when, anytime I play against Sam, I always remind the queen, like, do not dive on, on whatever she's playing. But the thing that I want to highlight is, like, a lot higher level than that. And it's not something that I recognized the first time that I was watching. But the positioning is incredibly important. So the first thing that you're going to see is... Um, and I'm going to talk a lot about like Sam versus maybe other O guards. So I think what a lot of objective guards do is they stay really close to the objective that they're pushing in order to just pick off drones. And they think that their job is, oh, okay, I'm over here. I'm just going to pick off drones. As the drone comes in, I'm going to pick them off. And, and that's all I have to do. Right. And if that's all Sam was doing, she wouldn't be in this position. She'd be down here. Right. And I think that's the position that a lot of O guards take. They just stay down here and uh, they just pick off the drones and it's very important that to, to understand why Sam is in this position it's one like yes the highest position over the snail but two all of the action is happening over left gate and I haven't asked her but I have a sneaking suspicion that what her eyes were on like just based on the play what her eyes were on was what was developing up top over here so she doesn't immediately go to that area because the gate is still tagged um, skulls and queen kind of have it handled. There's two drones over there trying to get in. And this is the first thing that happens that's super, super important and high level, right? Sam comes down a little bit, but as this gate gets tagged and this situation becomes a lot more dire, Sam's reaction is to come up and help here. 
And I think that is, again, like a sneaky good play that people don't realize separates like, you know, an excellent Ogard from, you know, just like a mediocre one, which is, I think that would have been my instinct too, which is kind of like, oh, I'm going to stay over here. My job is just to escort the snail. But her ability to recognize that the gate had just gotten tagged a second ago. So let's go back towards it. The gate gets tagged. Both of her military units are on the right side. The only cover of the left side is would be her coming up from the bottom. And I think that's a really, really hard thing to do, right? Coming up now to support against these drones is really important. And also noticing that there is no threat coming to the snail, so she can peek out and go help somewhere else. And this motion, I would say, directly leads to these drones getting bumped out or getting picked off and them not being able to get anyone out of the gate. After that sequence ends, Sam comes back over here and, you know, hits this play. But, yes, this individual play is important, but the thing that makes it so incredible is that what happened before, right? Like, she's able to make that play in a very... Um, in a very, uh, I guess the word would be like a, in a smart way because they have no warriors and they have no warriors because of the coverage work that she was able to help uh, with a second ago. So, you know, like, yeah, she hits this kill, but even if she didn't, that's fine. They have two warriors up against none, snails on their side. And the reason that they're up three warriors to none is because of a lot of the work that she was able to help do over this gate. And that's why when I see something like this, I always try to analyze like, what happened before it to allow this to happen in a way that was safe and also like just the smartest play available and it was the sequence before.